Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us and welcome to another uh, in our series of the Level 3 Learning um, series that, that we're just doing some uh, webinars out there just to keep people uh, in touch with uh, what's going on with, uh, with us and some things in the industry. Um, look, I hope you're all well and staying relatively sane under the uh, current Level 3 restrictions and that um, you're all observing the uh, social distancing like we should be, um, like me in my empty office, just me here. Um, and that you're also all keeping busy, um, that there's stuff in the pipeline and I trust that there's uh, yeah th things on the go. Um, look, contrary to what it might say down the bottom here, I'm, my name isn't Jeff Price, I'm actually Jonathan Rugg. I'm, for those who don't know me, I'm the Architectural and Specifications Manager here at ITI TimSpec, uh, looking after all the you know, specification design stuff uh, at the beginning of, of projects, um, installation manuals um, and installation specifications, council queries, consenting issues, all that sort of thing. All right, so uh, that's part of the role that, that I do here. So all sort of inquiries at the front end um, come to me. Uh, and as a result, uh, look, our topic this morning um, is an exciting new product, well, relatively new for us. It's been around for a wee while now in New Zealand, um, and we took over the distributorship for this uh, late last year, uh, just before Christmas, a um, new product called Tricoya. Uh, now, Tricoya is uh, technically uh, a compressed fiberboard sheet, so essentially an NDF board, uh, but I say that with a certain amount of trepidation because I do want you to um, sort of forget everything you know about MDF and how it performs and uh, how it's used. Okay, Tricoya is unique in the fact that it is produced using acetylated wood fibre chips. Okay, so uh, that is, has been acetylated prior to it being compressed into a sheet uh, and as a result gives the, gives the sheet unbelievably um, high durability uh, and stability. Uh, similar to the, um, the the process that we produce a coir with, okay, uh, which is taking a relatively easy, fast growing, uh, low grade softwood, grinding, uh, then acetylating it through a, a unique process and then uh, making it unbelievably durable. And so it can be used in situations and applications traditionally not um, you know, of, of the realm of, of softwoods, okay? Normally that would be the high end, uh, old growth, um, slow growing hardwoods, that sort of thing. Or in, by contrast, chemically altered um, timbers and, and processes such as copper chrome and arsenic, LOSP treatments, that sort of thing, okay? Um, so we have, um, yeah, a, a product that we can be, that, we can produce relatively cost effectively, okay, and has stability and um, the unrivaled um, durability. And I just have to click onto my screen here for a second, one moment. That's not moving on, that's a worry. The, um, so what it is, is the biggest advance in MDF for 30 years, okay. Guaranteed for 50. Now that is a key point here, guaranteed for 50 years in just about every application above ground, okay? So indoors, outdoors, exposed areas, that sort of thing. Um, if it's in contact with the ground or fresh water, then it is uh, warranted for 25 years. Um, and the warranty and the, and the guarantees are not just against decay, but also against adverse movement. So what we're saying is the timber will say, well the product will stay stable and durable for 50 years above ground. So it can get rained on, it can be um, it can be a cladding, it can be a sign, it can be a screen, it can be a suffit, it can be fascias, all those sorts of things. And it's, it's guaranteed for 50 years, okay? So way and above most other timber uh, products that we'd use in those situations. Okay, produced by, as I said, Axis Technologies, who uh, are known in New Zealand for producing Akoya. And for those of you who are familiar with Akoya, you'll know that that goes through a unique process called acetylation, um, which is something they have uh, developed and made um, made their own. Okay, so 
that as opposed to akoya, trichoya is um, a little different. So ground up wood chips like you can see there, um, are then uh, put through a process prior to being compressed. Uh, and the, what, what it's doing is altering the molecular um, makeup of the timber, okay? So it's not pumping it full of a chemical to make it durable and using the chemical to make it durable. The chemical allows a process or a modification of the cell structure to occur. And as a result, that makes the timber very, very durable and stable and basically inert to moisture. So it doesn't matter how wet the timber gets, it doesn't react to that moisture. Um, the timber and, and either a koya or trichoya aren't waterproof, which is a common misconception out there sometimes. Okay, so they're not waterproof. Okay, water will get into them, it gets right into the, into the cell structure of the timber, but the cell structure doesn't swell or inflate or react to that moisture. And subsequently, it doesn't do that to temperature changes as well. So from solar radiation, so it doesn't matter how much sun or how hot it gets in the sun, we're not seeing a lot of expansion and contraction. We don't say zero, but we say it's so minimal, it's almost hard to measure on the average sort of uh, sectional piece of timber that you're using. Okay, so yeah, acetylation of a tim timber is actually a natural process occurs in, in wood, certain timbers. Um, it's been around, the, no the process has been known for a long, long time, 100 years or so, uh, but only one company's cracked how to do it on a commercial scale and producing uh, acetylated products out there on, on a continuous commercial basis. Okay, so they are very, very, they hold on to that IP very, very tightly. Um, it's very, very uh, secretive operation. We get led into a certain amount of it. We have taken groups over and toured the factory and we've seen a certain amount, but they won't tell us every single thing that goes on um, because it is a, a unique and, and very, very protected process. There are others out there trying to crack it, but no one's done that yet. Okay. So now with the trichoya, it's slightly different to akoya. Akoya is a batch process where they take basically a fillet stack pack of timber, put it in a chamber, close the door, ramp it up the, the, the pressures and, and the and temperature and with the acetic anhydride and the reaction happens and they drain it all off and take it out of the tank. Okay, with trichoya, it's not. It's a continuous process. So what you're getting, that, that picture there is actually on the side. It would be a, a, a tower. Um, hanging a, like a um, like a large um, coning tower, and the chips go in the top end, and as they fall down, they're getting acetylated on the way down. At the bottom, the acetylated chips get carried away on a conveyor. So it's a continuous process running 24 hours a day. Okay, so chips in one end, acetylated wood fibre out the bottom end. Okay, so a very, very efficient process. Um, and the recycled acetic anhydride, which is causing the reaction, is just pumped around and recycled as it gets used up. Okay, so it, there's, a, there's a standalone plant, one in the world, in Hull in the UK, uh, which has just been commissioned. So it's the first of, uh, of several that are um, being planned throughout the world. Um, hopefully in a short while we'll have one down in the Southeast Asia region, so it'll be even better for New Zealand situation. Okay, so they're using wood fibre from trees in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere for this, unlike the Akoya, which is New Zealand grown radiata, which many people know. Okay, because it's, uh, it's the best timber available for that. With the trichoy, because it's been ground up, they can use uh, a lesser grade of timber, knotty, split, you know, um, uh, second grade, because it's all been ground up and, and not relying on the single piece of timber. All right, so um, what does this mean? It means that it's, it's unbelievably durable, unbelievably stable. And how do we know this? Because we test it. Well, when I say we, it's Access Technologies tested, and they tested extensively all over the world, including including here in New Zealand, primarily with Scion down in Rotorua, the uh, old FRI, and uh, so independent third-party testing going on. Uh, one of the main ones they do, or the two main ones they do, is the freeze-thaw cycles. And what they're doing there is they're taking basically a, a section of the panel, okay, soaking it in water at around 20 degrees Celsius, so nice warm water for three hours, saturating the board. They then take it out, they then subject it to freezing at minus 20 degrees Celsius for three hours. Okay, so very, very extreme range of temperatures. Uh, and they do that a number of times. Okay, wet and dry cycles is another test they do. So it's 18 hours in, in less than five degrees Celsius, so fridge temperature water. 
okay so it gets nice and cold and then they and wet and then take it out and at six hours at 60 degrees celsius at about 20 percent relative humidity so relatively hot dry conditions okay then they repeat that and what they do is whoops sorry i'll go back they repeat that 25 times so those each of those cycles is done 25 times to try and create a failure or or some sort of um distortion in the board okay what they got was basically no distortion, no failure. Okay, so the, the little picture on the side there showing the uh, before and after. Okay, the left hand side, slightly lighter color, um, is a cross section of the of the panel close up. So that imagine that's an eighteen mil cross section. Um, after twenty five cycles, it's changed color a little bit because it has got wet, and as I said before, water will get into it but it's not distorted, it's not exploded, it's not blown out, it's not gone crazy on us um, after being sub subjected to 25 cycles of wetting, drying, freezing, warming, okay? So very, very reliable, very, very stable. Conditions way in advance of what we would see in an external situation in New Zealand, even if you were building a, you know, a, a, a board or cladding up on ski fields, for instance. Um, ideal for areas where there's big extremes in, in temperature or humidity ranges, uh, which we get across different parts and regions in New Zealand, of course. So yeah, less than 5% thickness swell. Um, and that's actually at the high side. We Really, when we look at it, we can't measure any difference when we wet it. Okay, so the water gets in there, it swells, it soaks up, it, it, sorry, it soaks in the water, but it doesn't swell, we don't see any significant change, okay? The other interesting thing is it retains its strength. So when it's wet, it doesn't go all soft like the old colloquialism of turning into wheat bricks. Okay, it stays rigid, it stays firm and hard. Okay, so fixings aren't compromised. They're not going to pull out through the board, um, strip any uh, structure there, any brackets, all those sorts of things remain firm and sound. All right. Uh, the testing is, is ongoing, but this is showing the first two years of testing. Uh, this one happens to be one from the States they did, uh, or they're still doing, but it's showing the first two years. So what you're looking at there in the graph, it's showing the blue, which is year one of being an outdoor stake test. So basically they take a stake uh, or a strip of the timber and they embed it in the ground. So it's in the ground about 300 mils and above the ground about 300 mils. So a 600 mil stake compared to other timbers. Okay, so comparing it to untreated softwood, which after the first year pretty much decays all away. So the, the scale on the left hand side, the zero to 10 is basically a percentage. So zero being 0% and 10 being 100%. Okay. So Western Red Cedar, after year one, it loses about 30% of its body mass. Uh, after year two in the red, the Western Red Cedar, over half of body mass is, is um, decayed away. So Pele, first year holds on pretty well. Second year, big dramatic drop down to about year 60% retaining. Uh, teak pretty good as we know but teak's a slow growing um, unsustainable hardwood which um, you know is hard to get and, and not, not a good option. Uh, but akoya and trikoya after two years no discernible decay showing. Okay so you imagine trikoya MDF panel in the ground no decay. Okay so it's not breaking down it's not softening it's not rotting it's not showing any signs of fungal attack or anything like that, all right? This one here is more for Australia or if you're doing projects into the Pacific Islands. So it's just showing the termite resistance here um, against all, all sorts of bugs and, and um, uh, borer termites, that sort of thing. This one here, it's a, done in uh, Northern Queensland and the main uh, uh, sort of bug over there is the Mastrodermis or Darwinius Mastrodermis uh, termite. The picture on the side there showing a steel box over a termite mound and basically they take the lid off and they drop samples of timber in there and then at certain times they take them out to measure how much of the of it's eaten away pretty much uh, and the scale on the left hand side of the on the graph there is showing the longer the line um, the more that it's eaten away okay up to 100 percent so the green the four at the top the green um, bars there are showing the acetylated timbers so acoya and trichoya and yeah, they have a nibble at it because remember it's not toxic, so they can eat it, but there's no nutritional value in them if they do eat it. Okay, so they can chew it, but there's no point to them doing it. 
Um, and but uh, comparing it to other timbers like standard grade MDF, almost all gone. Spotted gun, uh, an Australian hardwood, relatively hard and relatively common over there. Uh, it's still you know 80 percent plus eaten away. Cedar holds on a wee one, um, which we know cedar has natural um, uh, tannins and, and things in there that, that turn off uh, termites, but they still will, will eat it. But the alarming ones are like American white oak heartwood, completely gone, 100% eaten away. Okay, Some of the uh, hardwoods obviously hang on to about, about half their, their body mass, but they still are, are attacked and way in advance of anything that the trichoria or the achoria are subject to. Okay. So performance benefits, look, we, there's icons here just showing all the little benefits. Durability, we know about warranty, okay, 50 years above ground, 25 years in ground or in, um, or in wet areas. Dimensionally stable, so yeah, it's not going to swell and cup and twist and go crazy on you. Design freedom, look, we've only scratched the surface of what it can be used for. Um, we see big, big inroads into cladding, um, suffete linings, uh, signage, screening, that sort of thing, but look, the uses are endless. Uh, lower maintenance costs, the interesting thing to point out here is that it doesn't actually require coating or, or recoats over its lifetime in a, an exterior situation. Okay, so there can be big savings there. Need to point out that it will look uh, silvered and weathered and can look a bit discoloured and, and average, but it's not decaying. It doesn't require a coating. But if you do coat it, it's ideal for coating. It's a smooth, hard finish to the surface. It doesn't require any additional sanding. You can just coat straight over it uh, and um, we'll take all manner of coatings, whether it be stains, paints, or um, oils, that sort of thing. Okay, resistant to fungi, which we touched on earlier. Um, sustainably sourced, which um, everything that uh, access technologies do is driven from a, uh, an environmental point of view. Okay, so they will only uh, deal with timbers that, it's a, that are sourced from certified sustainable sources, be it FSC or um, whatever the local scheme is, wherever they're sourcing the timber. Okay, and it is the top schemes and the, and the top the top certifications they go for. Okay, the other point is there's no added formaldehyde in it, uh, or other heavy metal toxins or copper chrome arsenic, um, solvent preservatives, leads or PCBs, anything like that in it. Uh, they're all just uh, light natural um, products that are used for the binding and that sort of thing. Okay. So what are the applications? Well, look, endless, as I said. We see a big uh, market in New Zealand for claddings. So whether it be full panels or cut into strips to form weatherboard type things um, or board and batten situations, facades, um, shop fronts um, and other sort of uh, screening, that sort of thing. Fascias and suffetes, big market there. We can do a lot with it because we can go wider uh, and get decorative with it. Uh, shutters and screens, uh, so privacy screens, that sort of thing. We, we show some examples of that shortly when we move on to some uh, photographs. Um, signs and fencing and landscape gardening and a multitude of outdoor stuff, including street furniture and playground equipment, which we, again, see a, a big potential there in New Zealand because of the, um, the, the non-toxicity of it. It's great around areas where people are going to be up close and personal touching it, okay? So no nasties in it. It's not going to splinter. It's not going to distort or cup or get soft, okay? Ideal for wet interiors or wet linings. So bathrooms, laundry surrounds, um, cubicles and showers, um, in locker rooms or, or wet areas like pools, high humidity areas aren't going to affect it, okay? Um, one of the biggest ones, doors and windows overseas, uh, one of the biggest applications is, is joinery. So they do a lot of full door skins made out of it. And we show some examples of that shortly, uh, where they're doing the entire casings and laser cut out the, the shape of the doors rather than um, making from individual components, okay? Other uses, look, you know, you name it, it could be anything. A lot of marine applications we see, but um, flooring under tiled areas and wet areas, that sort of thing, instead of using a uh, marine ply wood, you can use the trichoria instead. Much lower impact from a, a chemical point of view and for those who want to have chemical free projects. Okay? Transport applications for truck decks, um, bait and trays on, on, um, on trailers, that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll have a look at some pictures now. Um, that's enough of the technical stuff. 
So yeah, overseas, as I say, they've been using it extensively outdoors for, for a number of years now and a lot of public space stuff, uh, like things like this climbing wall. Uh, and there, what you can remember is the, um, the handholds can be un unbolted and then fixed in to create a different climbing pattern up the wall, depending on what they want to do. So every one of those holes, um, is a, there's a screw fixing through there. So as they unscrew them, they're not softening or getting weak and, and compromising the handholds. Um, outdoor living stuff, Outdoor kitchens, we see big scope there, the whole ki the kitchen on the left there. Even though this one's showing it under shelter, it's not necessarily, um, it doesn't need to be. It could be fully sitting out exposed in the full weather um, as, a, as, a, as a built cupboard um, carcass and drawers and, and um, cupboard doors. They won't be wedging shut or jamming or uh, causing any issues. They'll be working summer, winter, wet and dry. That one there is finished with a with a high high gloss um, paint to give us almost a metallic finish to it, um, which is a certain look. But of course, it can be any finish you choose on there, uh, and but it stays rigid, hard, and true, and and uh, you yeah, won't be twisting or coupling or moving on you. A lot of shop fronts and facades being done overseas, um, where they're getting quite creative with both the paneling, the geodesic design there of the particular branding that they want on that building. Uh, along with obviously the use of colour and, and the um, box sections there. So yeah, quite a, quite a clever use there. Um, nice and easy, straightforward. This is a good one in New Zealand. Um, probably one of the best examples where the public can go and get up close and personal to it. So the David Trubridge lights at the Redwoods um, Forest Walk in Rotorua in New Zealand. So what they've done there is they've got uncoated a a tricoir and cut it into various shapes to produce the unique light designs. Okay, you can see there they're quite large um, and assembled, uncoated and hung in the Redwoods Forest. Uh, and for those of you who haven't been there, it's actually a fantastic walk you go through and especially when you do it in, at dusk, walk through in the evening, it lights up the trees, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful um, thing to do. The, um, and what you've got to remember is there, the, the, the lights are just sitting in the forest subject to lots of pollens, lichens, moss, mould in the shade, wet areas. You imagine how damp and cold it is there through the winter. Okay, so the Chaikoya has been there for a couple of years now and they're adding to it and producing more as they as they go along. So yeah, it's a really, really cool thing, the treetop walk there. For those who haven't been, once the restrictions lift on our travel around New Zealand, it's a good one to go and give a little boost to the uh, local uh, tourist uh, economy down there. Um, because they won't be having many foreign tourists yet. So yeah, I recommend that as, a, as quite a good one to go and see. Uh, and yeah, and as you're looking at it, remember that that's an MDF panel hanging in the forest. Uh, facades, here we see a lot of scope for, for claddings in New Zealand, whether it be full panel sheets. This is actually a full panel sheet with a groove routed into it to give the effect of a vertical ship that board. Okay, so we're emulating that look. Dark colours, no problem. Okay, so it can be coated dark, it's going to hold its shape, it's going to stay rigid and firm. Screening, um, massive potential. Uh, this one here, if you actually look closely, you can see it's just a single bolt, or a couple of bolts at the bottom, and then the same, again at the top over about, you know, a 2.7 span or 2.4 span. And the two um, screens or the two fins are staying true and straight, they're not cupping or blowing out or twisting on you um, and holding the shape. Okay, so nice um, and, and de nice detailing there. The, um, the, the, uh, the interesting use of colour in that one as well and uh, you know to get that effect. This one here is a different form, they've cut uh, individual uh, full sheets with a pattern to the front and then another sheet with a different pattern put behind so it gives a, a, a 2D, uh, sorry, a 3D relief to it to give some texture and depth to that screening going on there. You can see on the right hand side how it's been cut out. So just CNC laser cut out and then painted and then fixed to give that screen. This is another one used as a, as a, a shading in a, in a pool area to give some shelter from the sun. And then this one here is on the wall uh, of another building on the facade. There's actually windows behind that. They look out through through the, uh, the screening, uh, but it gives a privacy. 
Uh, this one here, interestingly, has been left uncoated to just weather off and do its thing uh, over time. And eventually it will silver off and weather and emulate the look of the, uh, the, the concrete, formed concrete below on the bottom level there. Okay. This one, uh, sliding screens being fixed over windows and they have um, individual lines through them, but just a random pattern being formed to gain to give privacy. Uh, they can be moved along, slid along the rail to, um, you know, to, to give full protection if you want to, or obviously allow for some, some view when they need to. Uh, overseas, as I touched on, the, one of the biggest single uses is in joinery. And what they're doing there is they're actually doing the full skins out of the door. So the, so the door on the left, for instance, the, the traditional sort of classic front door, uh, it's just a single panel with the, the windows being routed out and then uh, individual mouldings put on top of it to give the effect of individual components to make up a door. So instead of doing side rails and mouldings, everything together to produce that, they're, um, they're, they're moulded out of a single piece. Okay, and whether it be a classic styling or a more contemporary modern style where they're just grooving it to give a, a, a boarded effect. Okay, so this is the sort of thing they're doing. So individual door skin on the outside with an insulation layer uh, through the middle. And then you can see there in the stack below, they're routing um, horizontal lines to give a modern, modern effect to those doors. Then done with the coating to the finish you want to, whether it be a paint or a, to give a, a you know, dark striking primary colour or staining to give a, a, a timber texture colour. Okay, the other interesting thing that we can do is cut out single pieces. So this one here, single sheet, they'd laser cut out the, um, or CNC cut out the, the, the fretwork to give the effect of individual window frame, but of course it's all one piece. Now the cool thing here is, it has a slight radius to the inside corner, so that when you finish that with the paint, that's going to be a continuous paint film around there. No movement, no uh, twisting or cupping, so the paints aren't going to be vulnerable. Then we all know that's where the paints crack at the joins with movement. The water gets in, gets under the paint, and it can then cause a failure and then need to recoat. And it's a fiddly job to do that. This one here, cut out of a single piece, it's unlikely that that's going to fail. So the, the paint systems are going to last much longer and you're going to get a much better result long term. Okay, So very, very good solution. Um, nice and easy. You just set that up um, in a CNC program and cut that out. Uh, the other one is, is fascias. We can achieve really high detail, but also wide fascias. We're often asked to do you know, a 600, 650 wide fascia boards around big, big edges or barge boards, that sort of thing really hard to achieve in a single um, piece of timber, but in a panel form, there's no end to what we do there. And whether we're doing it like this one here with cutouts and, and intricate patterns, um, yeah, e easy to, to work. Uh, so feet linings, that sort of thing too. Um, we can do groove panel sheets to give the effect of, of uh, a TGNV type panel. Okay, so overseas, you had lots of things like shop fronts, commercial buildings using full panel sheets. Um, and uh, also to achieve a curved radius going around the front of that building there. There's brick to the sides and then on the curved radius, they're doing strips to achieve that and using the use of color to, to break it up to give it a bit of, bit of, uh, bit of color. Okay, nice finishes. Um, so this one's here with the bronze sort of paint finish to give the effect of a metallic panel. Okay, it doesn't look like just an MDF, it actually looks like some form of, of steel panel going on the wall, contrasts nicely against the natural timber on the rest of the building. 3D detailing, so CNC routed out to give a, a relief effect, um, and then finished with a high-end metallic paint. Uh, and wet areas, as we touched on before, so perfect and high humidity or, or wet areas, uh, it's not going to be affected by that at all. Lots of examples of outdoor situations. Again, those the doors on the left-hand side there, a single panel has been cut out, so uh, and then just glazed from the inside, from the back side. Okay, so very, very easy to maintain, very low risk of any failure. Playground and kids' equipment and skate parks, that sort of thing, robust and hard, can handle all the skateboards and treatments that kids are gonna throw at it. So what do we see? Performs like wood, but without its drawbacks, okay? It's not gonna move, it's not gonna swell, it's not gonna decay. Okay, robust, reliable in any environment. Easy to machine, 
um, easy to coat, easy to glue, and as a result, easy to fix. Minimum risk, maximum confidence, increases creative opportunities. We, yeah, it's only as little or as much as you want to do with this. We have just scratched the surface of what the potential is for this. Um, and meets, we hope, the customer's long felt needs. Okay, it's something that's going to perform for a long time. Uh, you can use a very, very, um, have a very, very low maintenance schedule going on there and you know, with, with low costs on going for commercial buildings as well. Uh, it comes in a range of sizes that we are currently holding in, um, in six, from six mil to 18 mil thick, uh, depending on requirements and, and applications. And at the moment, we're just doing the um, 1200 by 2.4 sheets uh, with a view to doing three meter long sheets uh, in the coming months once we get that. The, uh, the worldwide demand for that is, is so much that they're servicing just the UK and European market at the moment, but hopefully we get that shortly once the, uh, the new part of the factory comes on stream. So we've got lots of backup on our website. There's a new um, drop down, a new tab on there now where you can click on the Tricoya. Uh, and then go, get into some more information. There's data sheets and brochures on there, um, depending on the information you want to want to know. But look for anything further. Hit us up, um, email us, phone us, and uh, let us know if you need to see samples. We we uh, um, will be cutting some up and sending those out shortly to those who want it. Test it yourself. Stick it up on your roof, in your gutter, on your front lawn. Leave it for six months and see how it goes. Um, test it for yourself. Don't take our word for it. We know that people will be slightly sceptical knowing that it is an MDF board, uh, but we, um, the testing that's gone on and the, and the knowledge behind it, uh, we are supremely confident that it you know, will achieve all you want to achieve. Okay, so um, feel free to hit us up. Don't, um, you know, don't be shy to sort of have a go at it and just sort of dream up applications that you think you can use it for, um, we're here to help. Uh, but look, in the first instance, you can certainly um, uh, go on our website or email us at technical at ititimspec.co.nz, which is always a good starting place. But look, yeah, we trust that was just a, a, a gloss over really of um, Tricoya. We can delve much greater into every aspect we talked about today, depending on what you wanna know and what your potential using usages. Um, the, um, you know, we have stocks of it arriving shortly. Um, the first container will be uh, in our warehouse and all the range of sizes will be there. Uh, so yeah, we will be um, able to be supplied very, very shortly. But it certainly uh, feel free to give us a call. We're here to help and um, we trust that's been something uh, new for you to get excited about. We certainly are. Thanks very much for your attendance and we'll talk to you again soon.